Hello everyone, welcome back to my RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video, we're going to try to dock with the Ariana docking target. And it looks like it's going to be Nancy Faber who's going to try that. She'll be ready on July 31st. And so we are going to roll out the rocket already. It's got to take five days anyway. Oh, we have to recondition. All right, fine, recondition. And then roll out the one that's actually got the rocket attached. This other one is just a capsule. And the capsule is actually more than half the cost of the whole thing. Uh, unfortunately, we do not get that value, just for as a note. In other news, we uh, seem to be through our research queue. We have 318 science, so let's actually take a look at that. Um, is there anything I want? There is an upgrade to that uh, Hydrolox engine that was really nice. Um, so we've got this one, and there's an upgrade that gets it to 425 seconds of ISP, which is, you know, better. <laughs> it's not huge or anything. Um, it is also a little bit heavier with that, but as long as it keeps its 10 ignitions, it's okay, because that makes it better than the HM7, uh, which has only one ignition in any of its variants. So we don't really need that. It's got more burn time, more ISP, but I want the extra ignitions. And of course, we can't use J2 or anything else. Uh, so let's see. This does not have the upgrade. This does not have the upgrade. That doesn't have the upgrade. Where's my upgrade? <laughs> uh, uh, well, I can't find it in this row, the Hydrolox engine row. Um, I don't think it should be anywhere else. Well, as far as engines go, the other thing is whether we have a version of the Viking that's more reliable. That would be nice, right? Pretty sure we don't have the Viking 6. Level 6 tracking station and more comms. Probably we want lunar rated heat shields at the very least. So we're going to go up early landing and lunar rated heat shields. Are lander cans extra comfy? Pretty sure I used to just land the Gemini cabin on the moon, but maybe there's a point to them now. I think we're going to mainly do space planes. I might have to cook up a pod though. Though I guess the Mark 1-3 is suitably generic. We should probably aim for that. So, all right, we'll go up the pod row and try to get to mature caps capsules so that we have the Mark 1-3 pod. It's okay. It's not the spiffiest thing, but I think it'll do. We'll have to test it to make sure it can come back from the moon. Mainly, we were looking for something to come back from the moon with. So, all right. Looks like we need docking and crew transfer as well. Okay, so we'll need a little bit more science for mature capsules. Space station would be nice, but they haven't really implemented the space station program yet. We've got space station missions in the mission control building, but we don't have a space station program. I would like to do space stations. Okay, but now we've got a whole bunch of science queued up, so that's okay. Our scientists will be busy. All right. Let's send Nancy Faber up there. Hopefully everything is okay with this launch. We keep recovering the pods and sending up a, sending them up again, and I just hope that they're still in good shape. We've only really used two pods. Well, there's the little bit of charred blater that's traditional. That's on the pod itself. Nothing else really jumps out. So I think we're okay to go. Let's find a target. That's probably okay. SAS on, throttle, okay, throttle up, and ignition. And launch. Well, Nancy looks a little bit worried. You train for this, Nancy. Come on.
Okay, now Nancy's fine. Once they pass the speed of sound, they're happier. Okay, G-force limitation, separation... Going. And separation and ignition. Once we've uh, got some data points on the Hydrolox engines, we might want to replace this stage with them. We'll see. This is a little bit complicated right now. Okay, ignition. We'll try to get a tangency on the opposite side. So we'll boost up to about 450. Though I'll probably dump this stage so that we do that with the service module. Okay, we'll cut it there. Separation. So, it also came up in the comments, I'm aware that the Mark 1 pod has heat shielding. Uh, what you're not aware of is I've had Kerbals die because of that heat shielding. <laughs> I mean, I played Kerbal Space Program for 10 years and Realism Overhaul for 9. I've had traumas, okay? Sometimes, a lot of the time, the reason why I'm doing something is because of some horrible traumatic event that killed a Kerbal. And you just have to accept that. <laughs> so, that's why we always put a heat shield on the bottom of the Mark 1 pod. And um, I also know that the RCS is on here, but it's not good enough for docking. We need the forward docking uh, RCS uh, pointing this way. Uh, well, it's actually pushing us forward because we're docking on the tail. Uh, we need those, and so that's why they're there, and we might as well bring them back anyway, right? Uh, no point having them on the service module, which we're going to dump. We can recover these. Uh, well, of course, right now there's not much point to recovering it because I don't see any value in it right now. So yes, there are reasons. There are reasons for everything. A long, long history, a dark history of Kerbal exploits. And Kerbal exploitation, I guess. <laughs> A dark history of Kerbal exploits and Kerbal exploitation. Hmm. Probably could go a little bit further. Okay. Over there we'll have to lift our orbit up a bit. Well, we'll need it better than that. Uh, we'll do that at the ascending node, I suppose. Yep, seems fine to me. One kilometer there. Around we go. Pretty quick rendezvous. Not the quickest ever, but close enough. We've got a line out to one of the new geosynchronous sets. Good. Obviously we don't need it for the crewed missions, but still good. Alright, where is that docking port over there? Well, on the bright side, I don't think there's a way for us to randomly spin out of control after docking. So this should go smoother than the actual first docking. Our approach. And there we go. You happy? It's happy. We don't even have to bring Nancy back, actually. <laughs> We're done. No, of course we will bring Nancy back. Could boost Nancy up higher, but that's probably not safe. Uh, I'm still going to bring her down to a 300 kilometer orbit first. We, I don't know if we can transfer fuel, actually. That's a good question. I don't think we can. Hold on. 
Well, it's not the same fuel anyway, but yes, it does seem like we can transfer fuels. Uh, at least the helium we could transfer. So if we were using MMH in Mon 3, we could. So we do have that technology. All right, undock. And, all right. Just making sure we know where we're controlling from. We will control from here now. Be a little bit careful this time. I do want to come down in daylight. So first we're gonna bring the periapsis down to 300 kilometers. And then we are going to bring our orbit down for our descent from that periapsis. And yeah, the four thruster thing is a problem. We see lots of use of RCS to stabilize it. They were placed in symmetry, obviously. It's just thrust differential, I guess. Maybe if I had MH and Mon 3 thrusters, it wouldn't be so bad. Alright. Dispensing of the service module. And off it goes, off it goes, arming the parachute. Yeah, I keep not topping off the pod zone HTP. We should do that as we keep reusing these. Whatever happened to the little retrograde marker? It seems like it's gotten messed up here. Hmm. It's not its full self the old yellow marker okay 75 kilometers we are well sort of approaching kuru don't know how far along we will get but we are over south america all right in the thick of it and where are we well, not quite Kuru, somewhere here. Border of Venezuela and Brazil, maybe? Definitely the Amazon rainforest. <laughs> of course, of course it would be. So all that's left is EVA, and for that we're gonna need a completely different spacecraft. I mean, it says go EVA, but we're in the atmosphere now, so... The limit... Well, let's check in the VAB what the limit really is. But there is some limit, and... Below certain altitudes it might be possible, but above them, not so much. Okay, just a normal recovery for this one, I think. Let's try that. No recover to VAB this time. Maybe at least this way we'll get some money back. Okay. Retirement changes. 91.4%. I guess being in South America is a good thing. 4,782 funds. Alright. Okay, so I've been fiddling around with the Maya spacecraft, which we are going to try to use to do the EVA, but that's challenging, obviously, because it's a space plane. It will be launched by the Deneb launcher, uh, though a highly modified Deneb launcher, and it will be the final stage on its own. And we expect that the RZ-20s that we have on here will be able to provide 2,700 meters per second, we're limited to 22, uh, sorry, 20 tons right now, though actually I'm planning to expand that to 22 tons. Uh, I've increased the controllable mass on that controller, but I'll have to think about that. Actually, this already has a 30 ton avionics unit, but I think that's only with Kerbals, or with a Kerbal in front. Uh, that, again, that's copied from the Mark 1, uh, this one, this Mark 1 cockpit. Everything is copied from this Mark 1 cockpit, and hopefully now I've got it configured the same. Um, sometimes it doesn't give you the right mass unless you hover over it for a while. Um, you can see 1.3 tons. 
it's exactly the same mass, 1.3029, 1.3029, proof capacity of 2. For some reason, the cost is different. That was not my intention or anything. You can see the habitat's exactly the same. And it's pressurized. This took a lot of doing. The configurations are like all over the place. And uh, if we click on here, we have an air pump, O2 pressure controller, and a liquid, uh, sorry, lithium hydroxide scrubber. And then here we have the um, air pump, O2 pressure controller, and non regen lithium hydroxide scrubber. Now, this is complicated. Um, I tried to do it the way they did using a little tag called capsule scrubbers equals true which allows you to upgrade it but that didn't seem to work so um i don't know if we can i can't even click this configure scrubber so uh this one when you click configure scrubber it says it's only good for two days i'm got i'll try and fix this one so that's got the same limitation uh but in any case we're not planning to have the kerbals spend that much time in space or the Kerbals. Uh, same stuff, crew report, telemetry, uh, visual acuity, star occultation navigation, uh, same as on here, and so forth. We do have a lot more food, water, and oxygen. That's for later purposes. And we also have the MHN Mod 3 for the RCS thrusters up front. And But that's all the same capacity, using the same capacity as this tank. Uh, the Maya spacecraft has 500 liters up here, and this Mark I cockpit also had 500 liters, so no change in that. So I've tried to keep it the same, and it's the same entry cost, and it seems to be a little bit cheaper for some reason I don't understand, but yeah, that's the idea. But will it work? And also, will the hatch work? That I'll test uh, off to the side in in uh, sandbox save. But this is the spacecraft. It's got the docking port, the air brakes. Of course, these are just procedural things right now. I only made two parts, the cockpit and then the fuel tanks, and there's three of them. Each of the fuel tanks is supposed to be analogous to the whichever, this one. Uh, not that one. That's no cost. Uh this one this one so yeah and it's unlock cost is the same you can see 40,000 40,000 and in this case the price is one cent more <laughs> uh, I, again maybe some weird rounding but yeah one cent more for this spacecraft fuselage the heat tolerance you'll note is the same uh, uh, the internal is 1,000 skin 2200 same and uh, that should be the same for this one. I'm trying to convince everybody that I haven't cheated anything. That's all. And so that's the same. And we have space for two kerbals. And what it says here... We have two kerbals. Oh, I hope I didn't hire that kerbal. Oh, great. It's tough because uh, they have them, but those aren't actually hired yet. Okay, uh, so it says poor, poor, but not alone because we have two. And it's got the uh, call home, that's nice. That's a long duration, for the stress at least, but then we don't have shielding or anything. 14 days, I put 14 days in here, but then the lithium hydroxide says perpetual. Which it shouldn't. So that's confusing. I'll have to figure out this non-regen one. Okay, well, the propellant GSE is not ready. I, I'm not really sure that we want to try this yet. It's going to be really expensive. The unlock cost is 265000 And we don't have the unlock credit we used to. Um, I'm going to dump the liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen for a flight test. So we're going to have a jet engine flight test first. And there's also liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen in the wings. So just the uh, kerosene and oxygen. There's MH and Mon 3 for these thrusters here. I'll just eliminate all of it. And we have a controller in the back. That's uh, 
Gotta be a mature avionics like unit, that's the main thing we have to tool. So, without any of the fuel except for the kerosene, it's like that. And then once we dump the kerosene, it's like that. Hmm. Seems like we need to move the wing up, doesn't it? Well, if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. We're only using these Derwent turbojets because they only need to handle this when it's really light. And also, we're not trying to pass the speed of sound or anything. It's just supposed to help us land or flight test even. To be honest, it's helping to pull the center of mass back, primarily. Oh, if you're wondering about the FAR situation. That's what it looks like. Which is about as good as you can ask for. Don't know about why it's so unhappy about this. But overall, yeah, I'd like to do something to smooth that out. A canard right here might do some of that. I like canards, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's how that is. I'm just thinking whether I want to unlock this now. Well, let's tool. The solar panels aren't going to be enough to recharge it permanently or anything. They just give us a little bit more duration, hopefully. I'm hoping we can get more than nine hours, though. We would ideally like this to operate for at least a day. Well, we might as well update the GSE for all the things. Okay, upgrading the pad for the new resources. Did I actually get everything? Oh, I forgot the wing stuff. Gosh darn it. Oh well, we'll leave that out for now. Okay, so there's that. Incidentally, I set the wing pieces all to a mass strength multiplier of 0.85. I hope that's all right. So, how it's going to be launched is, well, like this, I think. We'll once again launch it uncrewed first because this is dodgy. Um, we've got one of these interstage adapters without the fairings, for instance, since I don't have a nice neat thing to wrap around the bottom end of it. Did I think about strapping it to the side like a shuttle? Yes. Um, I might still do that. This is just one core. There's no upper stage here. It's a very long core. And we've had to put five engines at the bottom, otherwise it, the, the burn time for these engines is not long enough. And we have four boosters, and it's pushing our pad limit, and it's pushing our pad limit in terms of the fins as well. As you can see, um, we had a limit of 11 meters, and I've made the fins as big as I could, but basically, where's the aerodynamic? Please tell me it's not high up. <laughs> oh, it's high up. So, we'd like bigger fins. So yeah, that's also a question mark for us. Will this work? Delta V wise, it's also very challenging. Not the most capable space plane I've ever designed. Rollout cost is interesting. The total cost of this is 30000 and we don't even have anything to tool. <laughs> so that's expensive. It says this part doesn't allow EVA exclamation mark. Looks like the limit is 20 kilometers. But the Mark I lander can allows EVA. Does anything prevent me from using this as a pod? Obviously with a heat shield at the bottom. But yeah, that's an idea. Using the Mark 1 lander can as our method for EVA. We could try that. <laughs> we could try that. I'll think about it. After all, that'd be a lot simpler than this. On the other hand, we really don't have to rush. Um, you know, 
they haven't even gotten down to paying us properly yet for this whole crude business. Maybe we should take our time, especially, and go ahead with the space planes. They gotta fund my space plane endeavors for quite a while, after all. We're losing money right now, though. Oh, the hangar upgrade. Still losing money, I guess the tracking station upgrade. Well, let me clear the tracking station upgrade and then I think I will unlock the parts. We need somebody trained in my new spacecraft. We better get that started now. Proficiency proto space plane. Oh, everybody's busy. We can't even start training yet. Oh, now Sebastian's ready. Okay, training proto space plane. Start. That'll take until October of next year. Okay, we finished construction of stuff. Now we're making some money, but we barely have enough money to do the uh, unlocks. It's a strange risk I'm taking. Okay, well, we're gonna build one. We're gonna unlock all that stuff. Add two jets, space plane wings and control surfaces I guess we didn't actually unlock before? Huh. Okay. Right. Well, we're gonna build one and send some engineers over. Okay, so we're building Amaya with our current available staff. It'll be done on January 5th, but we can get a few more people over. Um, we can get like a hundred and whatever, there were 76 more. Uh, if we can clear ELA 4, and but I still want that active for the Venus missions. And maybe we want another EVE 1. But again, we've got EVE 2 and 3 building on ELA 5, so um, maybe just EVE 1 will do. But after that, we can move people over after 47 days. But right now I want to launch this Geosat to the moon uh, to help with lunar communications because we need to do the far side of the moon landing. And, well, we'll probably need more than one, but we'll start off with one to help us out. So rolling that out. Okay, here we go. Let's see if we can get a moon sat. Throttle, well, throttle up. And ignition. And launch. I think on the Maya spacecraft, uh, when we do the flight test with the jet engines, we will put in some hydrogen and oxygen so that we can run the rocket engines and get some data on them. That would probably be a good idea. Okay, separation and ignition. While we're waiting for the Venus window, maybe I'll build some commsats at ELA-4 some lower level ones to help out hopefully something cheap maybe one launch of a bunch of them might even well it depends on whether it's gonna be buildable quickly or not but maybe even toss on the RZ-20s as a test for that as well oh I forgot to go to the right inclination whoops off plane transfer it is <laughs> Totally just going straight out instead of 120 was what we were supposed to do. Well, there's no timing issue. Uh, it's gonna take a while though. Unless we go really, really quickly. We could go really, really quickly. It's probably not a problem. Okay, 233 by 215. And we can separate. Oh, I didn't want them all on, but that's okay. We're a little bit past. We'll have to wait in orbit. Ah, uh, if I try and put a mid-course correction in, it doesn't show me the encounter anymore. So we'll just leave that be. 
Okay, we appear to have a line to Geosat in over there, but it's intermittent again. We should be fine for comms though. I mean, Kuru is just coming right up. All right, go. Seems like we ought to have a line to Kuru. I think we'll just proceed. Okay, we'll figure out the rest as a correction. And we have quite a lot of Delta V to correct with, so it should be okay, hopefully. I sort of wanted a bit inclined, not too much. And of course we'll want it higher up, but we can do that after the fact. We'll start off like this first. We'll capture it even though it's high here. And I'm looking to do something like that. Circular-ish. Okay, so we'll do that combination of things. We certainly have more than enough Delta V. There's the moon. There's Jupiter too. And go. Alright, that was the first plan. And to be honest, I don't care exactly where we've ended up with that. Uh, we are still just going to be getting into orbit and then boosting up. So let's head over there. Comms are great, obviously. You would expect that. It's a commsat. Okay, nice and high over the moon, pointing at the node, and we are going to capture. Ignition. Now as far as the far side of the moon landing situation, I don't know where exactly we need to be, but when we take a look at this, ideally past where the moon is blocking it, then it can communicate with something trying to land on the far side of the moon for a while. And if it's a 15 hour orbit, that'll be, uh, it'll only cover a small part of that while we're trying to land. And of course, if we capture into orbit around the moon first, we can always just wait until the satellite's in the right position. And I fully intend to capture into orbit first before landing this time. No more sudden death maneuvers, thank you. Okay, ignition. Okay, so there it is. We'll spin up. And I will shut off avionics. So there'll be plenty of recharging going on. And we have our commsat around the moon. So, uh, having done the docking one, Doc docking contract and this. I'll wrap it up here. So with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.